Before we continue, we'd like to give a shout out to one of our sponsors, Newcastle Business District. The Newcastle Business District continues to promote, develop, and enhance our downtown business area through community projects, promotions, and economic development. It was first created in 1983 under the name Newcastle Business Association and was renamed Downtown Miramichi Business Network. This was following Newcastle's incorporation into the new city of Miramichi in 1999. In 2006, it was renamed again to Newcastle Business District. Despite the many changes in its name over the years, the organization's goal has always remained the same, which is to further enhance the active growth of the downtown business community, Newcastle Business District. Shop Downtown Newcastle. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Corcoran Entertainment Show. I am your host, Frankie Corcoran, and uh, we're here um, with another episode. Uh, <laughs> that's it. That's it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna ramble, ramble like I normally do. Um, I mean, not ramble. Maybe I'll. Uh, you know what? Maybe I'll plug. I'll throw another plug out there for our uh, variety show that we're looking to uh, get some some. Uh, interested candidates to compete in uh Corkin Entertainment's first ever variety show at the Beaverbrook Kin Center September 29th um <clears throat> for a chance to win a prize there, there there will be first second and third place prizes uh but we need the people uh who are willing to compete and so that's why I am putting out another message to gauge people's interest and um yeah, if you're interested, you can um uh text or call 624-3315 uh or email fcorcoran10 at yahoo.com uh and we will happily be able to steer you in the right direction. Um we 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 got a couple more things planned for the fall as well too, so uh stay tuned for that as well. Um lots lots going on. Lots going on uh and uh that's great. That's that, that's how I like it. So uh yeah, so spread the word guys. Uh we want to get as many people as possible to partake in this variety show. Um all ages whether you're you're singing, uh, dancing, uh stand up comedy, you want to do a skit, anything at all, just email, we'll arrange something. Um Uh yeah, just get as many people and uh let's let's make magic happen. So, uh anyways, moving on to the episode today. Um my guests today are uh, Frankie McDonald, who has been on the show before, uh, internet sensation, uh, weatherman, and uh, we're also going to be joined by uh, Imogen Bailey. She is a podcast ho- or a podcast panelist, uh, photographer, model, writer, uh, uh, social media influencer, you name it, she does it. And uh, we're also going to be joined by uh, Jamie Klomp of the Kins and Klomp uh, podcast. And uh, we're also uh, uh, going to be joined by Jan- uh, uh, Janet uh, Dermody, who is the host of Kate Breton's Originals uh, on another podcast. So a uh, group of podcasters, as the episode says, Frank Squared and the Podcasters. Uh, it's almost like a <laughs> like a band name. Um, so, yeah, so we're going to chat today. It's uh, it's a great conversation with these guys. Um, uh, always a blast chatting with them. Uh, I, of course, uh, occasionally appear on their show or um uh, uh, Joey only show the meteorological report every Thursdays, um, which you can watch on YouTube. Uh, I, I, I know some of these guys from doing some episodes of that and, uh, lot, lot of fun. They're very, very fun people and, uh, excited to have them on the podcast today. So, uh, later in the show, I'm going to chat about why I think the flash flopped so hard because it flopped hard. Let's just say it just like, it was just a, like just completely, uh, nosedive. And uh, I also want to talk about, it's an article I read just recently from uh, Brian Cranston uh, talking about um, how he would play Walter White again on one condition, which is interesting. So um, I thought I'd give my thoughts on that. And uh, without further ado, guys, enjoy the show today. Everybody, welcome back to the Corcoran Entertainment Show. I'm your host, Frankie Corcoran, and today I am joined by a uh, pretty big panel of podcasters from all over the globe. Uh, first off, we have uh, Janet Dermody. She's the host of the Cape Breton Originals. Uh, Janet, how are you? 
Great. How are you, Frankie? Thanks for having me on. Oh, yes. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. I'm doing great. Uh, and then uh, we also have uh, Jamie Klomp of uh, Kins and Klomp. Jamie, how are you? Very good. And you got the name right right off the bat. That's a, that's a miracle in its own mindset. That's perfect. That don't happen too often. So you're like, is this guy real? Like, did this guy actually get my name right? <laughs> and uh, and then we have uh, Imogen Bailey, who is a uh, not just a podcast panelist, but she's also a photographer, model, writer. You name it, she does it. Imogen, how are you? Pretty groovy. There you go. Was that an <laughs> accurate uh, description of you? You're you're you basically do everything. I do a lot, lot, lot of different stuff. Yeah, it's uh, there is no one category. So grab six and I've probably touched on it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Jack of all trades. So and then uh, we have uh, Internet Sensation and Weatherman, uh, Frankie McDonald. Frankie, how's it going? I'm doing great. So far. it's muggy. I'm sitting Nova Scotia. It's going to turn really muggy in Vancouver and Victoria where images at this week as well. It's going to get really, really hot in Los Angeles, California. Houston, Texas, where the trade cable is. And Dallas, Texas, getting really, really hot there. And I just heard that Chad in Africa has lifted all remaining travel restrictions for COVID-19. Things are great so far, so far. Chad has relifted all restrictions. That's perfect. That's perfect, eh? Like, we're pretty much all back to normal now, and it feels amazing. So, uh, I mean, speaking of weather, Frankie, you're a big weather guy. Uh, and and uh, some um, I know these guys from the comedial uh, logical report hosted by the great Joey only who couldn't be on today, unfortunately, but shout out to you, Joey. Definitely be sure to stay tuned. Uh, comedial uh, logical report every every Thursdays. Um, you, you can check it out on his uh, YouTube channel, Joey only. Um, so feel free, uh, Imogen, we'll start with you. Uh, so uh, where are you from? How is the weather? Uh, what can you tell us? I am on a tropical island in the westest most part of Canada, uh, specifically southern tip of Vancouver Island. We get a lot of exceptions from bad weather, so it's really a whole lot of sunshine. So right now, uh, it's bikini weather. That's about the best I can say about that. Lots of sun. Nothing but blue ocean, blue skies, and string bikinis everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. So, uh, Jamie, how about you? Uh, good. So we, we were spoke. So I'm in Timmins, Ontario, Ontario North. Uh, we, we heard we were going to have a pretty cold and damp summer, which we are not. It's been uh, really warm, plus 30s most of the summer. Uh, the negative side effect is mo what most people are feeling in Canada is the fact that uh, the forest fire situation is pretty dangerous. Um, a lot of smoke. Uh, we've been, you know, we've been underneath the fire ban for the, about the past month. Uh, a lot of smoke in the community, poor air quality. And an interesting thing, I was in Toronto just on the weekend, hence the new Blue Jays hat. And I was on top of the CN Tower. Well, I'm not on top like King Kong, but I was went up high as I possibly could on the CN Tower where the public's allowed. And you can see you got a good, pretty good view of the actual the, the smoke haze. So we're we're feeling it all across our province, at least. And I'm sure the country. Unreal. I, <laughs> I'm just picturing... Up on the CN Tower, the helicopters start coming around. Oh, Jamie. <laughs> yeah, that's how dedicated I am to the weather. I had to get that that vital look, you know. <laughs> hey, Jamie, you're on our heat warning in Timmins. We are. That's exactly. Yeah, it's it's another hot day, which uh, that's not the norm here. Usually we're in our, our low low to mid-20s for summer, and it's been plus 30s for the majority of the day. So we'll, we'll take it minus the forest fire situation. We'll uh, take the heat here. Yes, there you go. There you go. And uh, Janet, I mean, uh, I was going to ask uh, uh, where you're from, but I mean, judge, you know, <laughs> podcast Cape Breton originals. I mean, that's pretty telling right there. You're you're from the States. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> How is the weather up your way? So it's uh, like Frankie said, it's uh, muggy here, too. It feels like 28 here today, but it's really wet. You know, you can almost feel the sweat coming on walk outside. It's very picking season, so it really doesn't matter. But uh, to touch on what uh, Jamie was saying about the fires and stuff, the air quality down here hasn't been too bad. Uh, sometimes when the sun does decide to come out lately, it's been a bit um, uh, hit or miss lately. Uh, if you get it at dusk or dawn, you can see that haze over the sun, but for the most part, not so much. But one thing I want to mention, have you guys ever had a woods ban on yourselves? Have you ever not been able to go into the woods? Has your 
municipality ever said, you're not allowed in the forest or you're getting charged and you can go to jail or get a big fine. Have you had that? No, I can't say we have here. No. No, and that's why I want to talk about it. We have. Uh, me and my husband have just finished buying a couple ATVs, and just like three weeks ago, they put a complete ban on the woods. And nobody was allowed in the forest for over a week. We were going crazy. We weren't allowed to do regular things like everybody else in the country was allowed to do. So, And that was because of Fiona. Fiona has that much damage from all the hurricane trees that are just laying like trees and forests and carpet. Um, they're terrified, that terrified for Atlantic Canada. I want you all to know that it is that scary. If the fires do hit like it took in Nova Scotia, the other end, Fiona trees were there and that's why it went out of control so quick. And if it happens again, dear God, if it happens in Cape Breton, it's scary, the forest trees that are down. So yeah, that's what happened. Crazy, Unbelievable. Huh? Unbelievable. And Fiona, my God, that was a huge thing uh, back in uh, September. Hey, Frankie, that was horrible. Hey, uh, I think uh, the last time uh, you were on the show, we were actually talking uh, about Fiona. Is that correct? Yes, October 2022, and the end of October 2022, when Joey only was on your previous podcast. Yes, that's right, and that's where uh, you and I first met for the first time, and, and uh, started this uh, 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 tradition of us popping up on each other's podcasts. So, but uh, yeah, unbelievable. I remember Hurricane Fiona. Like, oh my God, unreal. Um, so, uh, uh. Janet, tell me a little bit about your uh, uh, podcast, uh, Cape Breton uh, Originals. Uh, feel free to give any sort of, of uh, pitch or uh, uh, for, for folks who haven't seen it, where they can see it. And uh, yep. So Cape Breton Originals, um, what it is, is exactly what uh, everything else isn't about. All the other things that Cape Breton is, whether it's the music, um, whether it's the animals, I'm out in the forest, I'm out investigating and just exploring and showing people the innards of things at Cape Breton that you would see on a snowmobile or on an ATV or um, with my granddaughter baking in the kitchen. It's a lot of uh, politics sometimes because things can happen in Cape Breton and make us angry and it, it's that uh, or it's fun, it's weather, it's, you know, you're at a bar, I could be doing anything anywhere. And that's what makes it Cape Breton original because it's Cape Breton, whatever. Yo, there you go. That that's right, awesome. <laughs> that sounds right. Meet Frankie or that Frankie? Is where Jamie is at right now, kids to come, Jamie. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Uh, oh, <laughs> is it about, well, I, I can, yeah. Provide, thanks, Frankie. Yeah, I, I can provide a, a bit of an introduction. So, I'm one half of Kins and Clomp, which which we call a social media entertainment show. Um, we're 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 produced out of Timmins, Ontario. Uh, we have our own studio here, and we do a whole bunch of shows based on people, organizations, community events of individuals across Ontario and across the country. It, it, it's set up like a, a late night talk show style. Um, and, and we focus, you know, the majority of time on the positive things of life. So we can all open up social media and see all the negatives. We know it's a very serious world, but we, we like to give people uh, a break, whether it's, it's for 10 minutes or the full hour weekly. And, uh, we base our comedy off of Laurel and Hardy, old school comedy, where we make fun of ourselves, not of others. And, uh, we try to be relatable and and engaging and uh, we have a lot of community support and support from good folks like uh, you frankie frankie and uh, imogen and a few others join us uh monthly to provide their insights on the weather in a very entertaining way and we love it and we're very appreciative yeah awesome awesome and uh you you have uh sponsors uh as well too is that correct yeah so that's how we generate our revenue is through our sponsorship platform and uh you know we, we've had some folks that have been with us for a couple of years, but since it's a visual medium, uh, social media, as we all know, we're able to, you know, showcase their products. They can come in studio and they can physically show it. Um, and, and there's no real time constraint. So it's Timmins, Timmins is a blue collar. So it, uh, a community. So, you know, like what was mentioned, if there was a forest ban here, I'm sure there would be an uprival, uh, people hunting fish that would, I don't know how that would go here very poorly. But um, social media concept for marketing is relatively new here compared to other communities. So it's, it's led to some, I guess, early success. We're, we're able to stay open anyways for two and a half years so far. Well, there you go. They haven't thrown you out. So that's good. That's the main thing. <laughs> 
And uh, we were talking for the show that copier they sent you that copier, correct? Or uh, one of your uh, sponsors? Yeah, copier. Yeah. So one of our sponsors, a sponsor, sent us a copier. So we, you know, despite being digital medium, we still do a lot of hard copies and papers. So whether it's promoting activities or events, we're going to be at uh, some marketing stuff that we bring to events. And yeah, so we probably print about 2000 pages a month. So we have that old school office style copier here, which is uh, mainly mostly on most days, our friend. <laughs> yeah, that was, that's what stood out to me before uh, we were talking. You're like, yeah, there's our copier sponsor says it works about 60% of the time. And I'm like, so that's like any frigging copier that you have ever. Yeah. It just never want works when you want it to. Uh, I have one right here. It's like a toxic uh, relationship. I'm like, I hate it. Uh, I don't like it. I want, I, I don't want it anymore, but I need it. <laughs> it's just right. I don't, like, I can't, I can't live without it. Uh, that's yeah. how it is. Yeah, so exactly. Uh, Imogen. So, um, I mean, I was going to ask about your podcast, but I mean, you're really on like every podcast, you know what I mean? So it's like, you don't really have like your own podcast. You're kind of like, uh, 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 you're, you're a podcast. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you're a, an in-demand guest or, uh, in-demand, uh, how would you describe yourself? <laughs> I prefer to think of myself as more of a phantom. I show up, I haunt the place for a while, maybe throw <laughs> some stuff around like a poltergeist and then leave without warning. So <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. a great way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't run a podcast of my own. Um, I have my personal website that kind of has updates of stuff occasionally, social media. I'm a social media influencer, so a lot of what I do is just tracked on social media. And that's kind of how it goes when I'm working with sponsors, when I'm working with uh, clients, when I'm promoting. Like, professionally, I do work as a model, so I do deal with clients where I'm representing brands and organizations and stuff, so I do a lot of live events and things like that. So, podcasting, I just don't sit down long enough to put it together. I just pop in and out and do my thing, and now I'm here. <laughs> and now you're here. When you do so many things, I mean, like uh, like uh, I mentioned earlier, you're a photographer, model, uh, writer, uh, uh, everything, social media influencer, uh, when someone says like, what do you do? Like, 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 uh, do you always like try to say just, I do everything. Or do you like try to narrow it down to one where you're like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a photographer amongst other things, or I'm, uh, I'm a model amongst other things. What do you like, uh, describe yourself as like, just, just one thing, or do you just, just say, yeah, a multitude of things. Just go to my site. <laughs> um, it depends on the situation. Like, I'll usually pick something that's a little bit more situationally specific. So if I'm doing a live event, then I'll say that I'm a brand representative or a model or something in that vein of things. Um, if I've got a camera glued to my face, I'll say I'm a photographer. For the most part, I just say I'm the sum of my pixels. Figure You're it out for yourself. <laughs> a multipreneur, uh, Imogen, is what you are. A multipreneur. I just find it for you. Yeah. Yes, yeah, like, there you go. I mean, I, yeah, like one of my other, one of my side projects is that I do run a supplement company. I am a certified personal trainer, very fitness oriented. Um, and that bleeds through on my social media with my fitness videos, but I do run a supplement company as well. So if I'm, you know, at the gym and I'm chatting with someone, I'll give them my card and say, this is my supplement company. I can give you a code if you need it or, you know, for discount supplements. If I like the person, I'll give them a code. Otherwise, I'll just hand out my card. But again, it's situationally specific. So <laughs> there's a lot of stuff. So if you don't like the person, what do you do? <laughs> because you just said, if I like them, I'll give them the business card. But what if you don't like them? You just walk away? It gives them the business. You know, <laughs> well, I mean, I'll still give them my card and say, you know, if you need supplements, here's the place to go. But I'll usually... As, as a bit of a code, I have a fake name that I give that's related to my name. I'm not going to say what it is because it's just a polite. So when I meet someone later and they call me by the variation of my name, then I'm like, right, something about you didn't sit right with me. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. so there's a lot of coded language in play for a lot of different things. So if I don't like someone, I'll give a fake name that I will still answer to as an abbreviation of my name. So... 
you'll you'll say you're somebody you I, don't I like did or that something. All through my 20s. In your 20s? <laughs> I did that all through my 20s. Wait, was, tell me about it. My, tell me all about through my this. 20s, I gave a fake name of someone I didn't like. Well, you know those situations where someone's just like really on you for, they just really want to hang out. They really want your information. They're not backing off. You're trying to be polite. You don't want to cause a scene. So I would give the name Michaela and the fake number of someone I knew named Michaela. So... <laughs> Well, it's like, at least you're giving them an answer. You know what I mean? Like, in, instead of just ghosting them or just saying, no, I'm not going to give it to you. Here, I'll give you a name. Yep. You didn't ask for my name. You just asked for a name. So. It worked. And to be fair, Michaela was very appreciative of random guys calling her. So <laughs> it was kind of a win-win. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wins. Everybody wins. <laughs> I mean, speaking of you doing a lot of things uh yeah. you know photography modeling stuff like that frankie is also a jack of all trades internet sensation weatherman frankie how do you describe yourself are you uh uh internet comedian weatherman if someone asks I, you like what do I you do? do i'm the internet comedian weatherman and i do dancing videos i do my most viewed video ever on my youtube channel sky try see 15 hot dogs at once my current youtube channel stocks will since june 14 2011 like I said that hot dog video is like one of my favorite videos ever too. Like that's 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 one of my all time favorite videos, and I think we chatted about that too, uh, uh, previously. Is there another video of yours, uh, that's a favorite or? The, the guy dancing, then being chased by a gorilla, uploaded in July twenty sixteen. Oh, okay, perfect. I'll have to check that out. Do you have uh any more plans to do more uh videos uh like that? Like uh, are we gonna get more? I don't know, guy tries to eat a hundred hot dogs, or? I did. The guy dancing, then being chased by moose. The guy dancing, then being chased by raccoons. Things like this. Those are the latest comedy videos I did. Okay, perfect. Perfect. So nothing more on the horizon? Or it is it kind of like, how do you plan those videos, Frankie? Is it is it almost like... Uh, that was my own idea. Like, do you like... Uh, wake up in the morning and say I'll, I'll make this video and then plan it out or do you just turn on the camera and then just kind of yeah, go with the flow kind of thing? i got something else today today the asteroid 2022 81 hit a torch planet earth on tuesday july 4th 2023 it's going by fast year and and i and another comedy video i did three weeks ago is the guy dancing name being chased by black bears that's another one and i did another that's one of the comedy videos the guy dancing then being chased by pack of gorillas Oh my gosh, geez, look at that. Okay, now I wanna I wanna point something out here. One of the highlights of one of Frankie's recent videos, the guy being chased by black bears. At the end of the video, the black bears are the ones who get away. Spoiler <laughs> alert. But it is that it means, is a great punchline it because it's so unexpected. The guy, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta see this. Chased, the guy dancing then being chased by raccoons. That's my most recent comedy video. My and another video I did. The guy dancing, being them being chased by moose. Ooh, moose. so you got moose. Uh, what was uh the uh the other one again? Sorry, my memory was bad. Bear. The guy black dancing, bear. Being... black bear. Yeah. Yeah. Black bear. Look that one up. The end of it. It the end of it is unexpected, and even though I told you about it, you're still gonna laugh. I'm still it's gonna good. laugh. It's yeah, it's I gotta say it's one of Frankie's best ones because that little twist at the end is that he's all relieved that the bears got away. <laughs> well, shows you're a great writer uh and and uh, entertainer if you know what's gonna happen, but you're still blown away. That's 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 you're still something. invested, yeah. Exactly. That's <laughs> just a testament to the creator. So kudos to you, Frankie, for that. Um so um and my oldest video on YouTube is Chaos and Street before reconstruction. That's my oldest video on YouTube. Oh, right on. Awesome. And and that was uh what year? 2011. 2011. Oh, yes sir, eh? Awesome. So, um uh uh Jamie, how would you get involved with uh Frankie and and and, and um uh, uh this whole podcasting uh world with all these uh, different connections now? Like one second you're with Frankie and then now you're now you're seeing people like me and then you're seeing people like Janet, you know what I mean? Like how did you kind of uh, make these connections. Yeah. So actually I worked in, uh, in, well, I went to school for business at Ottawa U and I worked in human resources for 17 years. And, but I, all, I always had a passion for making small comedy videos, doing some stand up comedy. 
uh, local community theater. And when my contract ended at my last job, I met my business partner who happened to, uh, he was on the radio and Rogers laid off all the local people. So I pitched him this niche idea to do what we're doing. Um, I believe, you know, I, I, I reached out to Frankie because I, you know, I, I love what he does. You know, Frankie makes people happy. And that's the exact thing that was important to us. And I'm like, I have to get Frankie on the show, whether he's doing his, his passionate weather reports, whether he's doing his comedy videos, he's like, he makes people smile. He makes people laugh. He makes them happy. And that's the type of people like we like to work with, deal with, interview, showcase. So I reached out to Frankie on social media. I told him a little bit about what, what he did and uh, he's done a bunch of stuff with us since. And, uh, it's awesome. And of course, introduced us to some amazing folks who share the, a, lot, a lot of the same path. So we, we try not to surround ourselves with people that focus all on the negatives. I realize life's not a bed of roses. Hate to use a cliche, but it's not. Um, but people who can focus on positives and making people laugh, whether it's simple or complicated, super important to us. And, uh, you know, I see a lot of those people here today. And Frankie is kind of like your agent now. Like Frankie is always the one saying like, oh, here, I booked you a guest. I got you so-and-so from this show here. Like, so he's your agent, right? You you kidding me? He's the best agent. You you can't break too much. I'm going to have to send him a paycheck though, which I probably should be doing already. Yeah, Frankie's an amazing promoter. (laughs) Yes, right. One of my old weather reports from way back in October 2011 is severe blizzard warning for Denver, Colorado on Tuesday night and the Wednesday. That was a really old weather report. Oh, right on. So that was what, 2011, you said? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Uh, what's on the horizon, uh, Frankie, uh, weather-wise uh, um, or anything at all? Like, like uh, Because I know one thing that you're you're uh, really you promoting. Are, you're muggy air all across eastern Canada, eastern United States, western Canada, western United States, at the same time, even Los Angeles. So and what's... Vancouver. All the way up to Yukon. So what's the deal with the uh, solar uh, eclipse, too? I know you want a whole a whole bunch of us to go down for that. So yeah, uh, Monday, feel free to invite April, the listeners of the show to that. Monday, April 8th, 2024, total solar eclipse, City, Nova Scotia. Every one of you guys have to stay at the Holiday Inn in downtown City, Nova Scotia. You'll be, you, every one of you guys, you'll be arriving in City, Nova Scotia on Friday, April 5th, 2024. Then the total solar eclipse takes place on Monday, April 8, 2024, when the moon crosses over the sun and gets dark in the middle of the day. That's going to be awesome. Janet, are you going to the solar eclipse? Oh, yeah. It's going to be right here. I'll be under the sky where it's taking place. I am not live but 10 minutes from Frankie. Oh, well, there you go. So that works out good then. <laughs> uh, Imogen, Jamie, how about uh, you two? Solar eclipse, that sound intriguing to you? Any eclipse sounds like a good time. <laughs> yeah. And for me, yeah. A thousand percent, you know, as a Canadian, I've actually never visited the East Coast. So, you know, I could I can get down there and be part of this event and be at the East Coast, which we hear so much amazing things about. So, yes, definite yes for us. So, uh, who... so the only it's also coming down to Brandon Hook and Joe Silver and all those guys. Oh, perfect. So so uh, instead of saying at a hotel, uh, what if, what if Frankie and or Janet just hosts a big party at their house? And just opens up like an Airbnb. I, should, I know that you stay at the hotel. Holiday yeah. in downtown city. <laughs> Janet, oh, what? No, no, off you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's cheaper. It's Frankie's cheaper to stay at someone's house. house. <laughs> Wait a minute, it's or hotel downtown city, Nova Scotia. Oh, well, there we in. go. So, so guys, stay tuned for that. The solar eclipse next year, April, 2024. Uh, we're super, super stoked for that. Frankie will be, uh, I take it, Frankie, you'll be uh, promoting that on uh, social media and stuff like that as, as uh, we get that closer. Means, and to be Frankie, the, all of you guys will be staying at the holiday in downtown Sydney. Jamie, you'll be <laughs> staying there. I hope they're paying you for this promotion because they are going to get booked solid simply <laughs> because of Frankie. Oh, Frankie I know. has been talking about it. And at every turn, he's like, you are all staying at the Holiday Inn. Book a room yeah, at the Holiday yeah. Inn. And, and, and we, and, he'll give them a free business card. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, picture you. I picture us just, just like just sitting in our house, like you know, just minding our own business, and then and then and then like the, these guys come in with like black suits and say, "Frankie McDonald sent us. You're coming to the hotel." And then you, 
<laughs> and then just takes us. Then we're like, oh my God, what? It might be a kidnap. We're like, oh no, we're just going to the hotel to watch the solar eclipse. Frankie, you're not going to do that, are you? You staying at the Holiday Inn the Hotel downtown Sydney. You're not going to send people after us, are you? If, if uh, something comes up and we're not able to go? <laughs> he already has. He already has. They're already on the way. They're oh, shoot, there's someone at my door. I'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One year early. So, uh, uh, so, 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 uh, Jamie, you're going. Uh, Imogen, you're going. Janet, you're going. Well, I mean, it's like 10 minutes away. Um, are you bringing your Joey families down? Going. Joey only's right. going. Brandon Hoke's going. You guys uh, bringing your families down too? Uh, Janet, you have a granddaughter. Oh, yes. The whole family be coming. There we go. Oh, How well. old's your, your uh, granddaughter? 11. 11. Oh, there you go. That's the fun age. That's the fun age. Who oh, else yes. is going? Compound Media, calm me down. Who's that? Compound Media, New York, calm me down too. Oh Ooh. my gosh. She's, oh, right. awesome. I see, Frankie, it was uh, Tom Cruise's birthday, by the way. I saw you had that on uh, Instagram. How old? How old is yeah. he? Tom Cruise is in 65. Yeah. Oh, we stumped Frankie. <laughs> Holy oh. shit. Oh, there he's looking it up. He's looking it up. He's looking it up. Tom, Tom Cruise, he's 61. Come on, 61. Frankie, there up. we go. That's perfect. Now, right. as soon as he said Tom, I was like, oh my God, Tom Cruise. Is Tom Cruise coming? <laughs> Tom Cruise <laughs> well, is coming I mean, to the solar eclipse. You never know who Frankie hangs out with. Uh, right. he, Frankie hangs out with a lot of people. It's kind of funny. That's true. Who's the most famous person you've ever hung out with, Frankie? Yeah, I met Patrick on November 5th, 2005. I met Amber Marshall from the CBC TV, like the horse. In, in July 2015, I met the main tracker in 2016. Oh, awesome. Ooh. Oh, my God. Look at that. Who would who would you want to meet? Like, who is the celebrity that you would like, 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 like uh, of all people in the world, who would you want to meet? Dead or alive. Dead or alive. Yeah, exactly. They remember that, they remember that Tom Cruise. Oh, for me, and Melissa McCarthy is another one. Oh, she's, oh, she's great. She's awesome. Yeah. Jamie, how about you? If you had to meet anybody dead or alive? Yeah, well, well I have two alive, Wayne Gretzky and dead uh, Pablo Escobar. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he he was, despite his obvious, Pablo Escobar, I'm talking about, despite his obvious negative side. The obvious. business side of him? The, the entrepreneurship and what he did for his mm-hmm. community, which doesn't override all the negatives, I know, was genius, and he built himself up for nothing. So if I could meet that Pablo before everything went nasty, I think <laughs> I would choose that. Now, whether he'd probably just feed me to the hippos after, but nonetheless. I, said, I got a message from Joey only just getting going today. What's yeah, he doing? He's just waking up. Oh, he's just I waking up all there. Only. And he's off fighting forest fires too, so he's probably Boy. he's probably uh, exhausted. I saw he had on Facebook. Dana, how about you? Any celebrity, dead or alive, who would you want to meet? Elvis, definitely. Um, obviously, because he's Elvis. <laughs> oh yes, just Elvis. Now that's the correct answer. Uh, Janet wins. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Imogen, how about you? Uh, I'd have to go way old school and go Voltaire. That guy was pretty awesome. <laughs> Voltaire, who's that? I'm okay. I'm um I'm, I'm drawing... ancient I'm drawing... philosopher. Huh? Ancient philosopher. Oh, okay, I had a. <laughs> I was I was getting ready to pull up Google too. I said I don't. <laughs> yeah, not a name. Not a name most people know today. Although you know what, I think that the uh, Escobar is a pretty solid one as well because he really did do a lot of super cool stuff. So yeah. I mean, you can say the negatives, but that's subjective. I'm not really gonna judge on that one. <laughs> But yeah, the 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 uh, commitment to animals and whatnot, like all the, all the positives that he did, like he did stuff that the government just couldn't do or wouldn't do for the community when when his town needed something, he made it happen. Rather the than good outweighs the bad. Government. Exactly, <laughs> dude did way more good than bad. So you know, a lot of people took up some bad habits around him, but meh, to each their own. So they would have been. <laughs> I just, just uh, James for fighting. I just heard that news as a state of emergency declared in Siberia over a range of virus in Siberia. Oh, geez. In Irkutsk region, Russia, a lot of trees are burning there right now, smoking the wildfires. Rises above the village of Morgadon in Russia's Irkutsk region. I wonder Aren't... if there was 
for rocket fires. What's the difference? They both burn. They're getting really bad over there, too. Yeah. That's a oh scary place God. to be. Unreal, um, eh? Unreal. Uh, poor people on that side of the world. They never asked for any of that, and yet here they have it. It's a sin. Just bad luck, bad luck, man. Oh, my gosh. I couldn't even imagine. I couldn't imagine. Uh, Frankie, yep. thanks for keeping us in the loop on that, too. And uh, definitely be sure to uh, to uh, keep us informed on our uh, group chats and stuff. So we're going to call it there for this segment, guys. Before we wrap it up, I'm going to go to each of our guests and uh, just ask for any type of final word, message, pr- plug hey, your I podcast. If you want to follow, m- 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 me goes first. If you want to follow my social media, my Twitter is at Frankie MacD. My Facebook is Frankie MacDonald. My Instagram is Frankie MacD 94. My TikTok is Frank Down nineteen four. My Clapper is Frank Down nineteen four. My Twitch is Frank Down nineteen eighty four. My YouTube channel is Dogs Wolves, and my LinkedIn is Frank and Down. And my Snapchat is Frank Amy C D Y. Best of luck to you. I'm Frank and Down. You're listening to the Cork and Entertainment Show. Cork and Entertainment Show. Perfect. Uh, Jamie, how about you? Any final words? Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you. I uh, I'm a first time guest. I really appreciate this. Uh, I love the setup and the guests that you have. Um, we're with Kins and Clomp. You can, our social handle is Kins and Clomp on all the regular social media sites. And uh, hey, come check us out. You know, we're based out of Northern Ontario, but we love chatting with people from all across the the country. And uh, I guess the the one note that I have is because it's Independence Day. You know, tomorrow, unfortunately, we're going to see a bunch of videos of people blowing their fingers off in the states. It happens every year. Okay, so. <laughs> So be careful to our American friends. And I have a bunch, especially in Philadelphia. They just go wild wild with these fireworks. Be careful tonight because you always get these crazy stories. Definitely, yes. That goes for anybody. E- even if there's Canadians who are celebrating uh, Independence Day, please be careful. Uh, <laughs> there might be the odd Canadian who's like, yeah, it's, it's just an excuse to celebrate or have a party. <laughs> so whatever you do, whatever you're celebrating, just be careful. Uh, Janet, how about you? Uh, so thank you again for having me on the show, Frankie. Um, so for Cape Breton Originals, watch me on Facebook, uh, TikTok. It's Cape Breton Originals. Yeah, things you'll watch are things of Cape Breton nature, our forests, our animals, the people. You just never know. The food we're eating from one day to the next, I don't know what I'll be doing, and I'll keep you entertained. And if I'm bored, so will you. So I don't like that. So thanks for having me. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Imogen, last but not least, Imogen Bailey. I am always up to something different from day to day. It's all on my social media. All the links can be found on my personal website, uh, www.imogen.in. That's I-M-O-G-E-N. I just had a brand new fashion magazine cover come out. So I'm on the cover of Off Town Magazine again. So that's my third one this year. Uh, Link to it, all the information for that is on my website. And I've got another cover coming up next month as well. So yay. Busy, busy. That's the way. So that's uh, kind of fun. that's the way away. to be. I said she's busy and busty. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's it. That's Imogen. Uh, hey, Imogen. <laughs> Angie TV no longer does podcasts. He just does predictions now. Who's that, Frank? <laughs> Angie TV in Montreal. Oh, okay, right on. Well, there we go. What? For those of you guys who weren't who weren't sure, then. Who? Sorry, Frank. Hey, Angie. Angie. Angelo Perala. And yes. TV. Yeah. 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 He he discontinued his podcast. He changed direction and he focused on other stuff. And Frankie gives us updates on Angie's shenanigans. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay. There we go. Look at that. So uh um we will take a short break there, guys. We will be right back uh after a, a little bit of music. But uh I will be here. These guys won't. These guys are busy, so they will be uh <laughs> they they will be going off to uh get back to work on their stuff. But uh thank you guys so much for coming on and uh we'll have to, to do this again sometime. Uh but until then, this is Frankie, Jamie, Frankie, Imogen, and Janet signing off. Thank you guys. Bye. Thank you. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Corkner Entertainment Show. That was me, Frankie McDonald, uh, Imogen Bailey. 
uh, Janet DeMurdy and uh, Jamie Klump. Uh, so super, super fun conversation I had with them. Uh, so uh, definitely be sure to follow them on all of their social media. Check out their podcasts uh, and projects. And um, yeah, so um, our first topic I want to discuss for here we are now uh, on, on my lonesome now, um, as usual for these uh, segments at the end. Um, I want to talk about something that's been extremely uh, surprising very surprising, which is, uh, of course, uh, I, t- I reviewed, I spent like all last week's uh, portion at the end talking about The Flash, and uh, I'll talk about it for the first little bit, and then I'll move on to uh, something else, but uh, because it, it it's really, really interesting, because The Flash, uh, let's just, calling it, calling it a uh, box office disappointment might be too nice. Uh, the movie flopped pretty hard and it's being considered now one of the biggest box office drops uh in history um now i'll i'm I'm gonna check and see again what it's at but because at the time of this recording um i'm sure it's probably gonna change not by much i mean on a budget of 220 million dollars uh it just made 247 million on its um on its uh first uh well, I actually, it's been out for a few weeks now, actually. So yeah, June sixteenth, it came out. I'm I'm recording this July, uh, fourth, and yeah, that's not good, especially for now. For other movies, that's awesome. Like for any other movies, that's really good. For the Flash on that budget, you know, you factor in marketing and all that stuff like that. Holy shit, what a bomb! Considering how much they had tied into this, you know. Uh, Michael Keaton in it, like good God! I so I I was kind of in shock, really, to be honest with you, about how bad it bombed. I didn't expect it to be like a billion dollar film, um, but I was nowhere near expecting this. I would have guessed maybe five hundred million, five hundred, six hundred million, um, unbelievable. So, but the question is, I thought about this. I was trying, I I was just trying to think. I'm like, why did the movie flop so friggin' bad? Um, and so I narrowed it down to three reasons and I'm going to talk about why now this is just my own personal opinion, why I think it flopped. These are three reasons why I think the movie bombed. Uh, first reason is the, uh, DCU's track record. Now, um, Marvel of course has been knocking it out of the park. I mean, they, they have some projects that aren't really the best, but, um, when, when you compare it to DC, yeah, Marvel's on a hot streak. But DC, man, they 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 just they haven't had the best tracker. So I will go through. This is the uh, DC who was uh, ranked from uh, Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, I'm gonna kind of go through here. So um, the highest is uh, Peacemaker season one, ninety four percent. Now here's the thing. Now Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, I know lots of people don't go by them sometimes, but this is just because people will use. Lots of people use Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, to see whether they're going to, because it's not just critic reviews, it's audience reviews, it's, uh, everything. So, um, critic scores are good though to, uh, to, um, because even though every film is subjective, like, um, uh, some critics hated Man of Steel. I didn't think Man of Steel was a bad movie. Um, not the best, but it was still a good movie, uh, in my opinion. Uh, so even though, yeah, critics hated it. A lot, a lot of people actually did like it. You know, Henry Cavill's a great Superman and everything. But, um, and, uh, so, yeah, so Peacemaker Season 1, 94%. Uh, Wonder Woman, 2017, 93%. Uh, Shazam, 90%. Suicide Squad, 90%. Uh, Birds of Prey, uh, and the, and the Fantabulous Emancipation of the One Harley Quinn, 79%. Zack Snyder's Justice League. Uh, the Snyder Cut, uh, 71%. The Flash, 64%. Uh, Aquaman, 65%. Uh, Aquaman should be above that, but uh, uh, whatever. Um, Wonder Woman, 58 Man of Steel, 56 Shazam, Fury of Gods, 49 Justice League, 39 Black Adam, 38 uh, Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, 29 And Suicide Squad, uh, the first Suicide Squad, 2016, at 26 
So that's wild. So, I mean, they haven't really been... Now, this isn't to say that Marvel's perfect either. I mean, Marvel certainly has some uh, bombs, um, like, like like critic bombs. They haven't had too many, like, box office bombs uh, that, that I can think of off the, off the top of my head anyway. Um, the Cork and Entertainment Show would like to give a shout-out to our friends over at Pets of World. Pets of World is an online pet clothing store that has all the amazing accessories, clothing, and more for your furry little friends. Need a new collar or harness? Want a nice little clothing accessory, not just to keep your pet warm, but also to stand out in a crowd? Pets of World has you covered. You can go to petsofworld.com slash question mark REF equals Corcoran and use the coupon code Corcoran Entertainment for 50% off any purchase you make. That's petsofworld.com slash question mark REF equals Corcoran and use the coupon code Corcoran Entertainment for 50% off. But... Yeah, like that that just goes to show you right there like DC right off the bat they don't have the best track record. And that's a huge uh that's a that's big. You know, it really it really is considering um that like Batman v Superman of all movies, Batman v Superman, that one bombing was probably the biggest shock cuz I mean I I remember as soon as Batman v Superman was announced, I said there's no doubt about it. I said I think this will be a billion dollar film. Maybe one of the top five highest grossing films of all time. I like as soon as it was it was announced, I was so excited. I said, "Yeah, I said guaranteed." I said it's gonna hit a billion dollars. Didn't go that way, and it wasn't that good of a movie, uh, which was incredibly disappointing because I was so looking forward to it. Um, so yeah, when you look at their track record right off the bat, you know it's still not great. Um, so that's I think that was probably one of the reasons that the movie flopped. Uh, I don't have these reasons in any particular order, but like most, res- like, like most responsible to least responsible. No, I'm, I'm kind of just, you know, y- you can rank these however you want. If you agree with me, if you think there's another reason, then definitely be sure to post it. But this is just what I think, why the movie flopped so bad. So first reason, the DCEU's uh, track record. Uh, number two, the early reviews were mixed. Now this is a huge thing. Now I, I was talking about Batman versus Superman earlier. One of the big problems, or or not problems, but one of the things with that was, um, now early reviews play a huge factor into how a movie does. Like uh, for example, when uh, Avengers One came out, the reason why that was so big was because early reviews came out and people were just buzzing about it, just saying it's the greatest movie of all, or like the great greatest comic book movie of all time, and that's why it went on to be one of the biggest movies ever. Um, so early reviews can do a lot of good. And um, what's another one? Like Black Panther. To be honest, if Black Panther wasn't as good as, as people think it was, it would not have made a billion dollars. I think that was the reason why it had a huge factor. But now, this is just my... Per- I mean, like, I have said many times that I think Black Panther is overrated. I still like Black Panther. I just find it to be extremely overrated. Um, now, that's just my personal opinion. Uh, I'm not saying it's bad. Uh, God, it's so funny when I talk about comic book movies and I give my opinion. I gotta like apologize. I'm like, why the fuck am I apologize? I'm I'm being completely honest. It just I think it's overrated. Um, but because people loved it so much and the early uh, reviews were so strong, that's why it cracked a billion dollars. If it wasn't, if it was good but not as good, I generally don't think it would have been as successful as it was. Maybe five hundred million, six hundred million, seven hundred million, but definitely not a billion. And because of that, that's why because of the good reviews going into it that's why it was such a hit so uh and i think that plays a huge part of it like the er early reviews certainly didn't help it and that was the same thing with batman v superman as i was mentioning earlier uh the early reviews came out for that you know 29 percent on rotten tomatoes for a movie like this oh people aren't gonna be now then again i guess maybe it might not be the best argument to say because uh every transformer movie is uh a steaming pile of horseshit and the odd and, and the reviewers always give the worst reviews before it, but uh, like like beforehand, but it still makes a billion dollars and it still cracks like the top ten movies of all time. So maybe it's weird. I think maybe Transformers. That's just the I don't know. Like it's it's hard to say with that one because any other movie I find is just oh the movie's terrible. Then nope. Uh, so yeah, it's weird how that works. That Transformers can be like like Michael Bay can literally just wipe his ass and put 
put that piece of toilet paper on screen and people will pay a billion, you know, the movie make a billion dollars worldwide. So it's really weird how that works. But I think that played a huge factor into it too. Like, like of course, there was already lots of controversy surrounding the movie to begin with, with, um, you know, Ezra Miller. And uh, but although there was lots of excitement because of Michael Keaton as Batman. Um, and so... But the fact that it came out to mixed reviews, especially early on, it came out because they showed it at, uh, what did they show it? They showed it at CinemaCon, I believe, and that was in April. So two months before the movie came out, and there were already mixed reviews coming out for it, uh, that some say it was one of the best movies ever, some saying it, was, it wasn't it was as good, or it was just horrible, you know what I mean? So right off the bat, that tells you right there that, um, like, oh, okay, the, the, the uh, like, the movie's not good. I'm not going to bother watching it. I'll just wait, you know? So I th- I think that did play a huge factor into it as well. And number three, I'm going to say, um, you can agree with me. You can disagree with me. I think Ezra Miller played a fact a uh, role in it. Now, it should be noted that, yes, I'm I'm sure about like 90% or maybe not 90%, maybe the, let, let's say 75% of your average movie uh, uh going audience doesn't even know about the Ezra Miller controversy. but Come on, like I, I do think it played a huge factor into this, uh, to be honest. And I was kind of expecting it. I said, if anything is gonna sink this movie, uh, it's gonna be the controversy surrounding Ezra. I really do think so. But yeah, I really do think that was why. Now, here's something that I thought of. Um, I'm not gonna bother delving into that again because you guys know where where I stand. Like, <laughs> why would Ezra Miller want to sink this? Well, yeah, he's a child groomer and he's uh, you know, throwing chairs at people and this and that. So. And there's a video of him online choke slamming a woman. So yeah, that might be um, no need to go into detail on that. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. But um, I want to uh, say, because I mentioned last week about uh, the Christian Bale uh, situation where Christian Bale was asked to come back and he said no. I genuinely think the movie would have done much better if Christian Bale was in it. Now, of course, now, you know, spoiler warning. Uh, you, the George Clooney cameo at, at the end of Flash was supposed to be Christian Bale from what I hear, but apparently Christian Bale said no. But I genuinely do think that, I mean, like, you know, this is not not, not a knock against Michael Keaton and his uh, portrayal as Batman. I think he did a wonderful job. He was probably the best part of the movie, in my opinion, uh, at least for me. Um, Probably biased because I'm more of a Batman guy than a Flash guy. But anyway, um. <laughs> But, yeah, I really do think because The Dark Knight, anytime someone brings up comic book movies, they always include The Dark Knight or The Dark Knight. Uh, or, like, um, no, Dark Knight Rises uh, does not. I love The Dark Knight Rises, to be honest. I know it's not. That's a mixed bag. I'm one of the people who who, def, who will defend that movie uh, till I die. Uh, but even though, obviously, not as good as, as The Dark Knight. But, you know, Dark Knight, one of the greatest, is considered not just one of the greatest superhero movies of all time. It's also considered to be one of the best films, period, in my opinion. It's in my top 10. If I had to do a top 10, uh, it would definitely be in my top 10. But I th- I really do think if Christian Bale was in it, now, in what capacity? Because, yeah, it's tricky to say. Like, I think Christian Bale really could have saved the box office numbers for The Flash. Um, you can agree with me you cannot but i think more people knew christian bale's batman than they did michael keaton's uh just because i mean when you're talking about some of the best batman movies whatever or batman moments they always talk about the dark knight or uh dark knight rises you know uh or at least some people do i i i will always bring up the dark knight rises but yeah that's where i stand on that is yeah three reasons is the first one dcu's uh track record hasn't been the best and that really affected people's interest in the movie uh number two was uh the early reviews that were mixed that also tainted people's uh interest in it and number three was just simply ezra miller that nobody who, who could defend him you know after all the shit he's done so that's where i stand on that now definitely there's there might be something else there who knows maybe 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 someone else is thinking something that I haven't thought of. I don't know, but but I'd love to hear everyone's opinion on social media. Why did the Flash flop? Because it, it really is uh, interesting to me because I never thought it would flop. I thought, could it be affected because of the Ezra controversy? Yeah, maybe, but I didn't think it would be that much. But I nowhere did I near expect it to, be, to bomb. So, but uh, really interesting topic. Let me know what you guys think down on social media. 
and uh, I'll maybe put up a poll on Spotify as well. So definitely be sure to let me know your thoughts. And uh, with that down and out of the way, uh, my last discussion topic is going to be the the newest topic I've had in two weeks because, of course, with the flash out, that was kind of really all I was talking about. But uh, back to the old Breaking Bad, Breaking Bad world. Um, yeah, uh, this these topics were kind of slowing down because of, I mean, like, you know, Better Call Saul was over. Uh, Breaking Bad's been over for a while. Um, it's actually been almost a year now since Better Call Saul ended, which uh, is crazy. So I'll probably do something for that around the one-year anniversary. Um, the end of an era, the end of the Breaking Bad universe. Um, but uh, maybe it's not the end. Who knows? We'll see because of this new article uh, with uh, Brian Cranston. Uh, well, this doesn't outright confirm anything. I'm just, I don't know, I'm just talking to my ass. Uh, Brian Cranston would only return as Walter White again under one condition. So uh, this is from Screen Rant. Um, Breaking Bad star Brian Cranston walks back his earlier comments about retiring the character of Walter White, suggesting that it's still possible he can play the role again in the future. First airing in 2008 on AMC, creator Vince Gilligan's Breaking Bad ran for five critically acclaimed seasons before coming to an end in 2013. Since the show's conclusion... Both uh, Cranston and Jesse Pinkman actor Aaron Paul have returned to their respective roles for El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie, cameos in Better Call Saul, and for a Popcorners Super Bowl ad. Um, after suggesting earlier this year that he was done playing Breaking Bad's Walt for Good, Cranston now reveals in an interview with Awards Radar that he will consider reprising the role again. The, the actor makes clear, however, that there is a pretty high bar that he would need to be met for that to happen. Check out Cranston's full comment or watch the video interview with the relevant or um watch the video interview below. Relevant section begins at 3751. I'll read the quote though. I never underestimate Vince Gilligan. I thought when we were saying like on April 3rd, just a little while ago, that 10 years earlier was our last production day on Breaking Bad. 10 years ago. I thought when I was saying my tearful goodbyes to everybody that that was it. Then El Camino came up. Oh, I guess I'm going to be Walter White again. And then Better Call Saul came up. Oh, I guess I'm going to be on. And then Popcorners commercial comes up. You guys want to play it together? Sure. It's just fun. So I'd be a fool to say, yeah, we're done. I'll leave it uh, at nothing's on the horizon. And I know that Vince would not want to do something where he doesn't need a paycheck. And neither do I. So let's honor that. But if there was something that he woke up from a dream and went, oh my god. And he pitched me on it. And I too had the oh my god reaction. Then I'd look at it. It's not often that you get a oh my god reaction when you read or hear a pitch. If you're stunned and astonished by something, you should pay attention. So if that happens, I don't assume that will, but if that ever did, I'd listen. So, essentially, it, uh, what he said was the only way he would ever play Walter White again is if Vince Gilligan had a good idea. And that's what he always said too. Like, um, he, like I remember watching Better Call Saul when it first aired. And, of course, any interview with Brian Cranston and, or Aaron Paul, no matter what they were doing, they'd always say, are you going to be on Better Call Saul? Are you going to be on Better Call Saul? Of course, they did end up being on Better Call Saul uh, in the final season. Um, but every interview, they would always ask, are you going to be on Better Call Saul? They, they, they would always answer it with, if Vince Gilligan wants me to, That's, that was it. Like They weren't going to come on in a way that was would just feel like, okay, we got to shoehorn them in here. No, well... Any cameos that Vince Gilligan did, like in El Camino and in Better Call Saul with Walt and Jesse, it it made sense. Well, El Camino wasn't a je cameo from Jesse. That was Jesse's movie. But um, uh, Better Call Saul, yeah, like uh, his cameo in Better Call Saul meant something. So, um, and Vince Gilligan's very, very careful with that. And, um, you know, that's why he's probably the my favorite writer of all time, to be honest with you. Uh, creator, writer, producer, like he's just... Everything, everything. He's just my favorite everything. Um, Vince Gilligan's a genius. And uh, Brian Cranston, of course, I say, is my favorite actor. I mentioned him in my top five favorite actors uh, episode I did. And uh, so, yeah, uh, do I think... Now, of course, as soon as an article like that comes out saying, I would only come back if Vince Gilligan wanted me to, people are going to take that and say, oh, he just confirms he's going to play uh, Walter White again. <sighs> no, like I... S like, this is what I always say whenever I talk about these articles. Like, people just, they want to take a headline and run with it and just say, oh, he just confirmed he's come back. No, he didn't confirm nothing. He just said if Vince Gilligan wants him to come back, he definitely would. So just people, 
just want to hear a good <laughs> people just want something to run by that's all so uh yeah that's where we stand on that so do i think he's going to come back i really don't think so i don't think now, I think he could come back. Well, because, of course, they did, as they mentioned, they did the uh, Super Bowl c commercials for the, the popcorners. They did. So, do I think it's impossible that he could play it again? No, no. I, I, don't, I don't think it's impossible. I think he, we could see him. Like, he even did a couple things on a Saturday Night Live and stuff like that where he came on as Walter White for a skit. Or, um, like, I remember Jesse, um, what was this for? Uh, I saw this one thing where Aaron Paul came back as Jesse for a crossover skit with The Office. It might have been a Saturday Night Live thing or some sort of sketch show, but uh, not the actual Office itself, but uh, might have been, even been the Emmys. I can't remember now. But anyway, type in uh, Jesse Pinkman, The Office. You'll you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, so I can see them doing that. Like, I can see them keep, keep on coming back for the roles in, like, spinoff to spinoffs, like, 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 just, like, simple skits like commercials and, and stuff like that that i can see i can see them continuing to do that but do i think you know see them coming back for like a you know an, like a another breaking bad show or whatever no because vince gilligan's already made it clear that he's done with the universe after better call saul um and he seems pretty true to that because of course vince gilligan's moving on now he's doing a new show for apple tv plus with ray 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 uh, seahorn which i cannot wait to see i think it's gonna be awesome um, so, yeah, in that way, I don't see it, unless, like he says, Vince Gilligan has a great idea to, like, hey, we should do a, a, a prequel to Breaking Bad, like, a prequel to Better Call Saul, where it's during Walt's teaching years or something like that, which, in that case, they probably just have to recast him, because he'd be, you know, 70-year-old actor playing, uh, you know, like a third, 20, 30-year-old, uh, high school chemistry teacher, yeah, that doesn't, or, like, a student, that doesn't make sense, so. Uh, I'm going to say, yeah, he will be back as Walter White, I think, but not in a, um, like a series, like a, like a, another Breaking Bad prequel or sequel or something like that. I don't see that. No, I see him coming back at, um, similar to the Super Bowl commercials where it's like the popcorners or like those little one-off, uh, they're non-canon. It's just for fun kind of thing, you know? I think that's what he, like, like guarantee, I, I would say, um, count on it. I, I would say count on that him coming back in that capacity but not in a in an actual show like a because well first of all they would only come back if Vince Gilligan wanted them and Vince Gilligan has been clear that he's done with the Breaking Bad universe now so and he's moving on he's got other projects he's got on the go now so he's not coming back to it um which would I want to see it because I I did talk about that before do I want to see another Breaking Bad series I would say no, unless, but I'm in the same boat as Brian Cranston. If Vince Gilligan had an idea for it that worked, then yes, because El Camino and Better Call Saul both had no intentions of being as good as they were, and they were both a, like phenomenal, like a phenomenal mo movie sequel that didn't at all detract from uh, uh, the amazing ending of uh, of uh, Breaking Bad. Uh, and Better Call Saul didn't taint the legacy of Breaking Bad either. It was just an excellent... It, it makes you see Breaking Bad in a whole other light, which is fantastic. Um, so if Vince Gilligan has an idea, by all means, like, I will definitely watch... Well, I'll watch no, what he does, no matter what. Um, but, uh, yeah, so... And also, Brian Cranston has said that he plans on uh, uh, retiring in 2026, I believe, 2026, on his 70th birthday. He's going to be retiring. Uh, 2026, I think it was, yeah. Uh, or not retiring, he's gonna at, at least just take some time off. I'm sure, like, that just, he's just gonna, uh, take some time, clear his head, well, because he's been acting, like, he hasn't stopped with anything. So, just take some time off for himself, and, uh, you know, once you're 70, I mean, like, that's, like, he wants to enjoy some of his life, you know? Which, I mean, he certainly has, but... Anyway, that's where I stand on that whole thing with, uh, uh... Brian Cranston come back as Walter White. Uh, long and short of it is, yes, I think he'll be back, but in a com like another commercial, like another Super Bowl thing, not like an actual series. I just don't see it. So definitely let me know what you guys think about that uh, on social media. And we're going to call it there today, guys. I want to thank my guests, Frankie McDonald, uh, Imogen, uh, Imogen Bailey, uh, uh, Jamie Klomp, and uh, Janet uh, uh, Dermody. 
and uh, yeah, it was just that was a great conversation. I had a lot of fun talking with them, and uh, definitely catch their podcast, the uh, Kins and Clomp pod, uh, the the uh, Kins and Clomp show, um, and then of course uh, Cape Breton Originals, and uh, and then definitely be sure to check out to the Comedological Report. I always <laughs> get tongue tied whenever I say that. Title. The Comedological Report, hosted by Joey Only. Uh, you can catch Frankie and uh, uh, Imogen on that, and me occasionally. the The tricky part is that uh, my time zones never align for when they're uh, recording. Normally, it's like 12 a.m. On, on, on a Thursday night my time whenever we're doing it. So uh, I join whenever I can. They're a great bunch of people, and I'm super happy that they include me in in the show in any capacity they can. And uh, definitely be sure to support them, guys. So thank you guys very much. Uh, I'll see you guys next week. Um, spread the word about our variety show uh, on September 29th. We want to, you know, get lots of participants because we want to be able to actually do a show. And, um, yeah, so we'll call it there, guys. Uh, see you next week. Until then, this is Frankie signing off. Have a good week, guys.